And that's a very good question and uh, I, have, uh, I have thought about it also a lot. My approach to Schubert was actually through his songs. This is how I got to know Schubert. Um, as a child already I was uh, singing some of his song songs in the, the choir that my mother was conducting. Die Forelle, Stentchen, all these uh, famous pieces. So I knew his works mostly through his songs. And uh, later on I was really impressed by, by a lot of singers, recordings of singers that uh, that have uh, recorded uh, Schubert. And for my previous CD, the uh, Doppelgänger CD, the preparation for the CD was, was based on how would a singer um, phrase this uh, music. And uh, in this sense, the most important for a singer is to breathe. Where to breathe? where to, to keep the tension, where, where to keep the, um, the breath and then take time and then start again. And with the piano it's, it's very difficult because we have thousands of notes and we are mostly busy with uh, playing them all correct and playing them in tempo. So it's very often that we, we don't take the time to breathe. And Schubert in this sense, doesn't help us a lot with the score because he doesn't write uh, uh, rubato or ritenuto or take take time or something like this. So I think we really have to consider what is uh, what is the best uh, way to to do the phrasing. And um, and then it's it's the big question. Because for us, for the pianists, of course, we have to think also about the breathing. But it is very important how much, until which level, is the rubato in Schubert allowed? And for me, this question is, uh, is answered really from the personal experience as a musician, not only as a pianist. Because the piano score says one, the, the singer's way of singing is something completely different. So I, I have I have been trying. I'm anyway always singing uh, while while I'm uh, playing with with do re mi fa sol la si. This this comes naturally because in Bulgaria we we studied it with do re mi fa sol la si, not with C D F G H, which would be much more um, and difficult to sing. And so I sing, of course, only one one voice. I cannot sing uh, two or three voices uh, in the same time. But I really always think, okay, here I can breathe, here I can take time and then continue. And then there are, of course, many different opinions and many different um, uh, possibilities and uh, interpretations. But I think this is a very basic thing that we have to think about before even starting, starting a piece. And um, as we spoke before that uh, about the first impromptu, this was a very, very big question for me. Because the first impromptu starts with this shock, this fortissimo that he writes, and this shocking G, which is not really ex expected, not really Schubert, it's completely, completely from, from another planet for me. for this uh, sound to disappear so that we can start the beautiful melody. Here I would breathe. And um, I think it's very important to visualize the scores and to to, to also look uh, look at the uh, at the scores how how Schubert has composed them. And in this piece, the first four bars are one voice. Then this melody comes in in harmonies, which makes it so um, sacral, so um, much more full. 
and then we continue in, in B flat major which is a little bit more hope and we go back so this this has helped me a lot uh, during the, the the preparation of course then uh, it comes the, the moment when you have to perform the whole piece and then you have to also consider okay I can of course I have to breathe but I, I cannot interrupt the piece all the time so this is a very um, uh, this is the next level where we would just think how to to make one big line from one piece and again the for me the best help the best teacher are the, uh, the, the composers and their scores they knew what they want most of the time <laughs> most of the time they knew what they want so they wrote everything they wanted to hear so we are obliged to play as they have composed it and then consider um, depending on what uh, period of, of life they were in or what are, what is the style of this um, of this time how we can how we can uh, perform the piece I was thinking a lot about that. There are many options, I think, for exactly for this first G chord, because um, I even wrote in my, my scores, the first thing I wrote, I think, about this piece is G and then an arrow. There is no, uh, th uh, this G doesn't belong to any tonality. It's a shock for the public. We hear G. What is this G? It can be, uh, it can, it can be part of major, it can be part of C minor, it can be part of G major, it can be part of G minor. We have no clue what is coming. So we should not prepare this, we should not prepare the public what is gonna, uh, what is gonna come. So this is the shock and my image was that uh, he writes fermata on the first G which is uh, uh, which would mean just half of uh, of the length to be to be prolonged. I do wait a little bit longer, and depending on the piano, with Bösendorfer Imperial, of course, we have this uh, massive sound, and um, the vibration of the of the lower strings, which gives us the option to wait a little bit more. I think it's really dependent on the acoustic, on the on the piano, on the instrument. And then I imagine this, that the sound G is a shock and it comes, uh, it goes down. And from this, it's not interrupted, but it comes C, Do, Re, 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 Do, Re, Mi. For me, this is, this is how I, uh, I have thought about it. Uh, some, some people, of course, play it as uh, something completely um, interrupted afterwards. Um, my approach for now, maybe it will change, is that it does, um, it is a shock, but we have to listen how the, the how the sounds disappear and from from the moment that it it's almost gone, take the over, overtone, overtones and start uh, with, with the theme. But as I said, there are many, many possibilities of, uh, of performing and we are only in the first bar of the 30 pages and we can talk about it for, for half an hour. So it's really, it's a matter of, of uh, personal choice and uh, um, analyzing and, and deciding. Of course, and of course we're interested in your interpretation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's a very good way to, to think about as breathing. We, we don't interrupt breathing. We don't breathe and stop there and then continue. We, take a, we breathe and we continue. It has to be really natural and that's how the music for me should be. It's a very, one very important thing is that in a big hall, in a big concert hall, from the acoustic on, the sound goes much in, in a completely different dimensions, then maybe the breathing has to be even bigger because the public, my breathing has to go to the public, they have to take their time, say, okay, now, now I can relax and then continue. But uh, I think it shouldn't be exaggerated and it shouldn't be, um, and it shouldn't be too short, exactly as the way we breathe. We just take a, we just breathe and continue. It should be really fluent all the time. <laughs>